and that's when this rig is absolutely deadly. When it's windy, it's just a case of going in and feeding your bait and trying to hold your rig dead on that bait for as long as you possibly can. So, nice F1. And when it's windy, these fish really do gain some confidence to sort of just sit there and feed. As you can imagine this fish in the depth of water that I'm fishing in, if I can, I'll try and pick him up. He's, I'm going to hold him with two hands. I'll try and hold him with one, not let him flip out. But you can see where my float is to how big that fish is. They sort of creep in the peg when it's flat calm and when it's bright. Whereas when it's windy, I'll just pop him in. I'll keep there. When it's windy, that wind being on the water gives them so much confidence of feeding in the peg. You're literally trying to go in, get your bait in your peg and get your rig right on it. And there's a time and a place for both. And that's what I want to talk you through today. No Hi everyone, this clip was taken from our Match Focus website. I'm going to be adding a lot more content to our Match Focus YouTube channel. But if you'd like to watch the video in full, a more in-depth look at the rigs, the feeding, bay and decision making, then just head over to the website at matchfocus.co.uk. I'd really, really appreciate if you could like this video and subscribe to our Match Focus YouTube channel as it really does help us grow. I hope you enjoy watching the video. It's knowing when to use each one. Now the conditions can change literally at the drop of a hat. We've got a bit of breeze on the water now and this rig will be the perfect rig for the conditions we're faced with. But if it goes flat calm, then all of a sudden, as good as this rig is now, our carbon rig will be the number one. So again, lay my rig in, turn my pot over, tap my maggots in, you can see that wind starting to gust, but my rig is sat dead still. So just move my pole, make sure that my float is dead on them maggots. And when, it, when you are fishing like this, when you're faced with conditions like this, this is what it's about. It's just getting your rig in, getting it on that bay, and let your rig do the work for you. That's why you want a nice heavy float, nice positive shotting pattern to make sure that it's as stable as possible. You can see, you can see every little indication on that float, sat there like an absolute dream. Just hold it there. There's a little sign. There. Another fish. Now there is another way of fishing with your car with your wire rig, sorry, which can be really good. So when it's windy but not too windy. A brilliant way of laying your rig in is laying it in like pellets. And what you've got in your mind as such is, there's, what, they, what is it they say? There's more than one way to skin a cat. And that's exactly what it comes to with your presentation, is working out what's best and what you can and can't get away with. Now sometimes you have to lay your rig in to give the fish a chance to watch the bait. Other times, or more when it's really, really windy, it's just a case of getting your bait in your peg and getting your rig over the top of it. But this time, because it's not too windy, I'm gonna feed my bait and lower my rig in like I would fish with pellets. Because that way I'm getting a bit of both, if that makes sense. I'm getting the stability in my rig. But when I'm laying my rig in, I'm also giving the fish a little bit more time to be able to spot them maggots, try and get a quicker bite. And you... Oh, a little sign then. What you're trying to work out is what will the fish accept when they're in your peg. There'll always be one way 
that seems best on the day. So almost like if you can imagine a, a chart from sort of one to 10, say, there was a sign then immediately, say one, there was no wind, and 10, it was really, really windy. And then you had a chart below that from one to 10 of how confident the fish were. When there's no wind, the fish are almost at their least confidence in where they're sitting your peg or their feed really, really well. So on the days when it's bright and flat calm, those are the days where you can, you know, there's no wind, but they're almost, their confidence of them coming in the peg is at their lowest as well. So that's when on almost, you know, mark one as such, that's when your carbon rig's gonna be number one. And then if you took the other end of the spectrum, 10, when it's really, really windy, and um, when it's really, really windy, their confidence is really, really high because they've got cover, they've got the water movement. So what you're trying to work out is at what point do you fish each rig? Now, at one, when it's flat, calm and bright, that's when your little light carbon floats, tapping in your bait from a bit of a height, you know, even feeding some crush, trying to drag them fish in the peg. That's when that rig is going to be at its best. But then when you start getting to sort of seven and eight, all of a sudden, at number one, that rig was brilliant. Whereas now you can see I'm struggling to feed my bay and hold my pole. So if we was at point, you know, point one on the chart a minute ago, our carbon stem would be absolutely brilliant. Whereas now all of a sudden, with the wind on the water, we're starting to get to sort of six and seven. This is where your wire float comes into it. And it's about picking the right, the right rig for the right job, if that makes sense. I think one thing